He is to put the incense on the fire before the Lord, and the smoke of the incense will conceal the atonement cover before the testimony so that he will not die. God is so holy that even the high priest was not allowed to look at the atonement cover of the uh, Ark of the Covenant. He had to put incense into this thing, and it would obscure his vision so he couldn't look directly at the holiness of God who dwelt between the cherubim on the mercy, above the mercy seat. Okay, It's very important to understand how holy God is, and if it wasn't for Jesus, none of us would have a relationship with God. Okay, Going on, Leviticus 16. He is to take some of the bull's blood, the one he sacrificed for his own personal sins, and with his finger sprinkle it on the front of the atonement cover. Then he shall sprinkle some of it with his finger seven times before the atonement cover. He shall then slaughter the goat for the sin offering for the people and take its blood behind the curtain and do with it as he did with the bull's blood. He shall sprinkle it on the atonement cover and in front of it. Now the seven times of him sprinkling that blood is a picture of the seven times that Christ do, uh, bled in the Bible. The first was his circumcision. The second was the weeping in the Garden of Gethsemane. The third is when they pulled out his beard and then the stripes on his back, the crown of nails, crown of thorns on his head, the nails that he was given, and then when they pierced him in his side. He bled seven times in scripture, and those seven uh, sprinklings of the blood were a picture of that. And each one of those sprinklings, which we could get into great depth on it, has a, a significance for you and I. Can't get into it, it'd take us hours, but I just want you to understand that it is a wonderful picture of the shed blood of Jesus Christ that this priest was doing each year. Okay, I'm going to go back to Leviticus 16 now, and it says, When Aaron has finished making atonement for the most holy place, the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall bring forward the live goat. He is to lay both hands on the head of the live goat and confess over it all the wickedness and rebellion of the Israelites, all their sins, and put them on the goat's head. He shall send the goat away into the desert in the care of a man appointed for the task. The goat will carry on itself all their sins to a solitary place, and the man shall release it in the desert. Well, the people back then asked for Barabbas to be returned to them. The sin was carried back to them. All right, and what does it say here in Matthew 23? It says, And so upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on the earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. They rejected him and their guilt, the scapegoat was returned to them and they carried their goat, their own guilt away into the wilderness for these past 2,000 years. All right, that's the way I read these passages. Next it says in Leviticus, I'm sorry, Exodus 26, Make a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen, with cherubim worked into it by a skilled craftsmen. Hang it be with gold hooks on four posts of acacia wood, overlaid with gold, and standing on four silver bases. Hang the curtain from the clasps, and place the Ark of the Testimony behind the curtain. The curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Okay? The Ark was never seen by the people, and there was this curtain in front of it that symbolized a, a division between man and God that we could not bridge. Okay? Now, when the final temple was built, rather than the tabernacle, this curtain was giant. The Talmud records it as like 60 feet long, 30 feet high, and 20 feet wide, I believe, and it was as thick as a man's palm. Okay? And what does it say here? It says in uh, Luke 23, it was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And that was torn in two from top to bottom, according to Matthew. Something this massive, uh, the Talmud says it takes 300 priests to put this thing up. It was so big and heavy. Okay, the um, It was torn from in two from top to bottom, which is only something God could have done. And it was signifying that now the way to God is restored again because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We now go through Jesus and his shed blood and we have uh, uh, access to God's throne again. So you understand these parallels are just simply amazing. Now um, let me go down to Exodus 25. It says, this is talking about the construction of the ark. And you shall make two cherubim of gold of hammered work. You shall make them uh, at the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end. You shall make the cherubim at the two ends of it of one piece with the mercy seat. 
and the cherubim shall stretch out their wings above, covering the mercy seat with their wings, and they shall face one another. The faces of the cherubim shall be toward the mercy seat, or looking down at it. Okay? Um, where was I? You shall put the mercy seat on top of the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I will give you, and there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the testimony, about which everything which I will give you in commandment to the children of Israel. So God spoke to Moses at this above this mercy seat, where that's where he dwelled in between these cherubim. It was just a picture of the heavenly dwelling place of God. The term mercy seat in the Greek and also in the ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament is the word hilasterion. It means um, literally the mercy seat. That same word that's used in that old translation of the Old Testament prior to Christ is also used in the New Testament. I'm going to show you where in a minute. But before I tell you about that, I want to show you a parallel. We've seen the description of the Ark of the Covenant. What did it say in John 20 after Christ was resurrected? It says, Mary stood outside the tomb, where Jesus was laying, outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. So you see what's going on here. Jesus himself is the spot where the mercy is given. The law was kept in the Ark of the Covenant, and that's because the law is so perfect that we cannot fulfill it. And so each year they asked for mercy by shedding blood on it, and the blood covered the mercy seat, and God looked and he saw that something had died in sacrifice or substitute for their sins. But it only prefigured the work of Christ who had to die, fulfilling the law in our place, and then shedding his blood so that we could have restored relationship with God. Those two angels at the end of it where he was laying were a picture of the mercy seat of God on the Ark of the Covenant. All right, let me read you some things from the New Testament to confirm what I just said. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. That's the word hilasterion that I mentioned again a, a while ago. It's a propitiation or a mercy seat. So Jesus Christ literally is that propitiation. Let me take you back for a second to the veil. Remember it says that the veil was rent in two? That's a picture of Jesus. The, the Bible says that the, in the book of Hebrews that the veil was torn. The veil is his body. Everything about this Old Testament symbolism points to Christ. It all points to Christ. Here's another one. It says we have... This hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. Jesus went behind the curtain. All right? Uh, let me read you another one. It says here, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for our sins, but the sins of the whole world. So anybody that comes to Jesus Christ through his blood has access to God. And once again, that atoning sacrifice is the word hilasterion, or propitiation. All right, and here's one from Hebrews. It says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain, that is, his body. As I said, the curtain was a picture of his body, torn for us. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us near, draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. All right. In Hebrews, it also says that the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. They only pictured the work of Jesus Christ. So a few things to remember is that Christ is our atoning sacrifice. He is now the mediator that goes behind the curtain for us. But he's the curtain, and the curtain is torn in his body. So we have access to God through him and by him and behind him and everything is about Jesus Christ. And once again, the scapegoat was a picture of the people of Israel. But God has once again reached his hand back out into the wilderness and brought them back to the land of Israel where they again will find favor with him after the tribulation period. So do not think that the Jewish people are out or that we have replaced the Jewish people. We haven't. Those that have come to Christ through faith are part of the covenant of the believers, but those who haven't will go through the tribulation and will be, you know, they'll be redeemed by Christ at the end of the tribulation. He will come back to his people. So there's a lot going on here, and like I said, we've only touched on this, but I hope you see the symbolism of this Day of Atonement and how it found its fulfillment in Jesus Christ 
He is our atoning sacrifice, and glory to God for that, because now we have access to the Father because of Him.